Hello friends, this video on microorganisms friend and foe part 2 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Okay, so now let us look at the various groups into which microorganisms can be classified. So they can be broadly classified into four groups, bacteria, fungi, protozoa and algae. So these are the four main groups into which microorganisms can be classified. Now as I mentioned before that we will talk about each of them in little more detail that uh, how they look like. So let us talk about bacteria first. So bacteria are the oldest life forms. Now it is told that I mean nobody knows exactly which was the first life form that existed on earth because when you go to your higher classes you will get to learn that the variety of life forms which we see today for example the plants, animals, insects, birds, human beings so many different types of life forms but if you go back in time you will see that all these life forms they all originated or they all evolved from a, the same life form so all of them share a common ancestor but with period with over long period of time each different life form they underwent a lot of changes and that's how their appearance and their behavior changed so much now bacteria they are considered to be the, the one of the first life forms that existed on earth so that means they you can say that they are our ancestors they are unicellular, that is they are made up of one cell. Now you might be wondering what do we mean by a cell? Now I will give you an example to explain what is a cell. For example, when you want to build a house, what do you need? You need bricks. Lot of bricks together can help you to construct a house of your own choice. Now if you want to design a house of say, uh, if you want to design a two-story building, you can design that. But for that also you need bricks. If you want to design a, a small house, just a single floor, for that also you need bricks. If you want to design a huge tower, for that also you need bricks. So bricks are the building blocks for your construction. So a number of bricks together, they form a huge building of your own choice, of your own design. In a very similar way, inside every living organism, there are some basic building blocks and these basic building blocks are called cell. So each building block is a cell. Like here you have a brick. So in a very similar way, in a living organism, you have a cell. Now, there are two types based on the number of cells which are present in an organism. There, are, there can be two types of organism. One is unicellular. Uni means one. So that means unicellular. That is cell. So organism which is made up of just one cell. That means just one brick is forming the entire building. So only one brick is present in the construction. So similarly, if there is a, a living organism which is made up of only one cell, that is called unicellular. So bacteria are unicellular. But if you take example of human beings, we are all multicellular. Our body is made up of multiple cells. So uh, bacteria were unicellular. They appear in a variety of shapes and sizes. So if you look at the shapes of bacteria, some of them are spherical. Some of them are cylindrical as you can see here. Some of them were uh, elongated. So a variety of shapes are available in case of bacteria. So they come in a huge variety of shapes and sizes. So looking at their shape or looking at their size, you cannot tell that if that organism is a bacteria. Now where do they live? They live in soil, water, radioactive waste, deep portions of the earth crust. So basically if you talk about bacteria, they are present almost everywhere. In air, in water, in soil, in the wastes, in, even inside the earth crust. So bacteria are one of those organisms which can survive even under extreme conditions. So some of the bacteria can survive even in extremely high temperatures. Some of them can survive even at extremely low temperatures. So bacteria can live almost anywhere and everywhere. 
they can even live inside plant or animal bodies that means they are living inside another animal body for example you take our own examples you take example of human beings even inside the body of human beings there are many bacteria which lives there so bacteria they some of them might harm our body some of them might help our body so but they derive their nutrition from our body itself So basically our body is their house. So bacteria can live inside plant or animal bodies also. They live in colonies. That is one bacteria doesn't exist in isolation. A lot of bacteria together they live. Like how you have, I mean your residential colonies where multiple houses are present within the same compound. So you, ex you uh, live in groups. So in a similar way bacteria also they live in colonies. That is a lot of bacteria they live together. Talking about their food habits, so how do they get their foods from, where do they get their food? Some of them are autotrophic while others are heterotrophic. What is the meaning of autotrophic? Auto means own or self. So they can prepare their own food. So some of the bacteria will prepare their own food. Now can you give me an example of a living organism which can prepare their own food? Yes, the green plants. How do they prepare their own food? By the process of photosynthesis. So in presence of solar energy utilizing carbon dioxide and water, green plants can prepare their own food in the form of sugar. So green plants are called as autotrophic. So one example of autotrophic organisms are green plants. Whereas hetero means others. The term hetero means others. So, heterotrophic organisms, they depend on others for their food. Now, one example of heterotrophic animal, uh, heterotrophic organism would be an animal. For example, a goat or a cow. They depend on plants for their food. And plants are other living organisms. Similarly, human beings. They either depend on other animals for their food or they depend on other plants. So, that they also depend on other organisms for their food so they are also heterotrophic so bacteria some of the bacteria can prepare their own food whereas some others depend on others for their food so some are autotrophic while some others are heterotrophic so here if you look at this picture this actually shows you how exactly bacteria look like when seen under a high power microscope so under this you can actually see some rod shaped structures are present there cylindrical structures so these are the bacteria but when you see it with your naked eye you will not be able to see it at all. So this was the first classification of microbes. So as I said autotrophic means prepare their own food and heterotrophic means depend on others for their food. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.